Hi, what we're going to do here is in another video, I've actually gone through each of these word problems and developed the equations. And hopefully that would be a helpful exercise. But in this series, what I'm going to do is go through now that we have the equations and then spend some time solving them. Now, interestingly, I have the answers over here as well. So let's get started. So what we're going to do here, these are the equations we have for number one. X plus Y equals 56. Now, since they're both in standard form, I'm going to use the technique of writing them underneath one another. X minus Y equals 4. Now that they're both in standard form, I'm going to pull into my tool bag here and see what method could I possibly use to solve these. Well, if I made a line underneath them, I notice if I were to add them up, remember there's a 1 there and a 1 there. This is 2x. But now a positive y and a negative y cancel out. And this is equal to 60. Now when I go to solve it, again the technique from chapter 2, we're going to divide by the numerical coefficient of the variable. I get x equals 30. And that's what we have there. Now, how do I get what the y is? Well, I can use either equation. Let's use the first one. So x, we said, is 30 plus y equals 56. So I'm going to transpose the y, I'm sorry, transpose the 30, or just subtract 30 from both sides. You can do it either way. And you get y equals 26, which is what my ordered pair is. Again, you can pause it, go back, and the strategy would be to pause it somewhere and try it before I complete it. See if you get the right answer. Now for number two, we're going to do the same thing. Now this one's set up a little differently. So we have x plus y equals 44. And this is in, that's in standard form. This is in slope intercept. Y equals 2x plus 5. Well, we have a value for y in terms of x. So we're going to take this value for y and put it into the other equation where y is, in a sense, substituting this value for the y. And then we rewrite the equation. So we get x plus now, since there's no numerical coefficient, we can just write this. Equals 44. And notice now we only have one kind of variable. Here we had two, here we had two. Group-like terms. Now I'm going to transpose that five. Here it's positive, there will be negative, so this is 39. And now divide both sides by 3. x equals 13, which is what we have there. Now, since we have a value for x, 
we can go into this equation where y equals 2 times x, which we say is 13, plus 5. So y equals 26 plus 5. y equals 31. And this is the work you would need to support your answers, indicating you know the needed skills. Again, I'm not going over the translation from English to algebra. We did that on the other video. Here we want to, once we get the equations, how do we solve them? And on our test, there's only going to be 10 questions, and uh, two or three will be word problems. So, what do we have here? Well, we have two equations Let's put them in standard form. Went backwards a little bit there. Okay, here we go. X minus Y equals 16. Now, what method might we use here? Because this is 5Y equals 2x minus 8. Now, no equation is solved just for the letter x or the letter y. And here, this is sort of in slope-intercept, but we'd have to divide everything by 5, and we don't want fractions. So, I'm going to suggest solve this equation for x. So we get x then, just transpose that, change its sign, y plus 16. Now that we have that, we'll just take this value of x and substitute it in the other equation. So we get 5y equals 2. Now the x does have a coefficient, so we have to put the 2 there, put this in parentheses. That's our x value. Minus 8. So now we have a typical equation from chapter 2. 5y equals 2y plus 32 minus 8. So combine like terms here. 5y equals 2y plus, now I'm going to subtract 8 from there, and I get 24. I'm going to transpose 2y to the other side, or subtract 2y from here, 2y from there, and I then get 3y equals 24. Divide both sides by 3. This will become a y, and this becomes an 8. Now, notice I'm leaving out some steps. But again, once you get to chapter 4, you should be able to start. If you want to include all the steps, that's perfectly okay. So we now have what y is. y is 8. And we have that up there. Now, how do I get what x is? Well, if you look at this equation, it says x equals 8, which is our y, plus 16. So x will equal 24. And that would be the strategy or protocol, the modus operandi, the needed work to get your answers. All right, again, the record company, we have this worked out here. Let's write this one over here. They're both in standard form. So we have 2r plus 3t 
equals 31. And we have 3r plus 2t equals 29. So what we want to do now is to convert this into something that when we put a line underneath them, one of the letters will cancel out. So here's where we pause and think about what do we do to get something to cancel out. Now, if I multiply this equation by, let's say, a 3, and this equation by, let's say, a negative 2, can you see 3 times 2 is 6r, negative 2 times 3 is a negative 6r, the r's would cancel out. Now, had I multiplied multiply this equation by 2, this would become 6t. And this one by a negative 3, this would become a negative 6t. The t's would cancel out. And you are allowed to do that. You can check as you look at it to decide what to do. You are the master of this. So I'm suggesting the technique then is you're going to modify both these equations so that one of the letters cancel out. Now, 3 times 2r is 6r. 3 times 3t is 9t. And 3 times 31 is 93. All right, now a negative 2 times this is a negative 6r. A negative times this is a negative 4t. And a negative 2 times this is going to be a negative 58. Now you put your line, and you see as you inspect it, and this is what we multiplied these equations by so that this would occur one of the letters are going to cancel out. So when we do this, we these cancel out. This adds up to 5t, and this subtracts to 35. Again, we want to solve for t. So we're going to divide both sides by the numerical coefficient of our variable. We get t equals 7. And that's what we have. T is for tapes. Well, if T is 7, let's use our first equation here. We get 2R plus T is 7. So 3 times 7 is 21 equals 31. So we subtract 21 from both sides or transpose it. We get this equals 10. Divide both sides by 2. We get r is 5. And that's what we have as an answer. So here we've used two techniques, substitution and addition. All right, now in this next one, we've added a little bit of clip art to it, which is sort of fun. Here, a school, at a school, we have two portrait packages are available. And X would be the class picture, and Y would be a wallet sheet. And one class picture and 10 wallets cost $19. And two class pictures and 19, uh, 15 wallets cost $31. So they're asking here, find the cost of the class picture and the cost of the wallet size. Oh, okay. So we have it listed here, but how did we get there? Well, we have our two equations, so let's set them up. 
and this will be x plus 10y equals 19 and then 2x plus 15y equals 31. Now again you could do this by solving for y, I'm sorry, x here, or theoretically you could modify these equations by getting, let's say, the x's to cancel out. In order to get the x's to cancel out, what would I have to multiply this equation by? And the answer is a negative 2. So we're going to put it over here. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 10 is a negative 20y. And negative 2 times 19 is a negative 38. Now, we don't have to change the second equation because this term will already cancel out. So let's rewrite it. 2x plus 15y equals 31. So again, now what I'm going to do is put my line and these will cancel out. That's what I wanted. I modified this equation so it would do that. This now becomes a negative 5y equals a negative 7. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 5. And I get y, remember is the wallet sheet, is going to be 7 fifths. But again, that's a fraction. They want to know that in dollars. So, 7 fifths would equal a dollar 40. So you can think of multiplying this, let's say, by, well, to make this uh, $1, we'd have to multiply it by 20. Multiply this by 20, and that gives you that, and uh, that is what the answer is. <laughs> Again, just put that in your calculator, divide 7 by 5, you get 1.40. All right. Now, if that is what the wallets are, we can then figure out the price of the class picture. So it would be x plus uh, 10 times $1.40 equals 19. So this would be x plus, this becomes 14, equals 19. Subtract 14 from both sides, we get x equals 5. So the class picture is $5, and the wallet sheet is $1.40. Okay, so that was number 5, and we gave you some little clip art to make it nice. Let's do another. Now in number 6, a broker invests stocks that total this much. So the equation x plus y equals this much. The x is the amount you're going to invest at part of it. Y is the other part. Now you're then going to define uh, getting interest at 6%. This didn't come out too well. Let me write the equation again here. That's a zero there. It's kind of hard to read. Plus 0 0.09 of y. Now this is going to be a percent of that investment 
at 6%, a percent of that investment at uh, 9%, and you're going to expect to have this much in interest from it. Again, the first thing I would do is get rid of my zeros by multiplying everything by 100. That allows you just to move the decimal place two places over. And I have this. Now, you could do it by substitution. You could say that x equals uh, 4,500, or it's 4,500 minus y. Or, in rewriting it, let's, re let's try elimination just to show you another way. This is going to be 6x plus 9y equals 36,000. So I just cleared up and got rid of my decimals. Now my other one is x plus y equals 4,500. Now, if I multiply this equation by a negative 6, notice what happens. And to save room, I'm just going to do it right here. This becomes a negative 6 in here. This becomes a negative 6 right there. And now I have to multiply negative 6 times this. And in a moment, I'll change it. I'm, I'm going to finish this up then. I multiplied this equation here by a negative 6. So I'm now going to erase this so it's not too confusing. I multiplied each of these terms by a negative 6 and then I multiplied this by a negative 6 and I have that. So now I can use elimination. This is going to cancel out. This will give me a 3y. And when I subtract that, I get 9,000. So I'm going to find out what y is by dividing both sides by 3. And I get y equals 3,000. And notice what I have here. And what did we say y was? y was at the 9%. So I could have done it by substitution. I chose the addition method. And there's my answer. Now, if I go to this first one and I put 3,000 here, and subtract 3,000 from the other side, I have x equals 1,500. Okay, my wife is calling me for lunch, so I will close this up.